Hey y'all, um, today looking at doing a data bound list box with uh, custom class objects. So we're only binding to a list of a custom class. Uh, pretty easy really, should be a fairly short lesson. Um, so we'll break right into it. Uh, first thing, uh, we do need to make sure we've got a win form with a list box on it. Um, and then one thing I like to do is make sure that I've got this little checkbox here not really a requirement um, because we're binding it to a list and not to a database of any kind but I like to do it anyway uh, just so that I remember that it's there and that I know that functionality is there and if I ever do bind it to something else later it's one less thing I have to worry about um, odd functionality that suddenly the list box either does or doesn't support that I've been using. Um, so to get into it, I already sort of started this, so you'll see some of this is um, already populated to what we're going to ultimately want. Um, I'm going to put the main method into the form one load, um, and then going to have this public class. So if you're new to doing classes, you need to make sure that it's in your namespace, but outside of the public partial class for form one. So make sure you've got here where it's closed, and then create a new class. I named mine public class the class and I've just got two public strings in it. So public string display text and public string data text. And then for later I've got a list box one mouse double click event. So this is the basic. If you want to take a second to go ahead and build this you can. Um, otherwise we'll probably do it anyway. Um, so getting started. I've got my class here and then for my load event I'm going to put a list of the class and I'm going to name it uh, real hard to decipher but list of classes and it's going to be a new list of the class okay. and then I'm going to do a for loop um, for int i and we're going to start it at 1 for this example and as long as i is less than or equal to 10, um, then we're going to i increment i plus plus. Okay. All right. Now, then each time we loop through it, I'm going to do a new, uh, new the class equals a new the class. And then each time we are also going to do. Um, for new the class dot display text, we're going to do example one or example sorry example plus i dot two string, and then we're also going to do new the class dot data text, and it's going to be basically the same thing. I'm just going to expand upon it a little bit. So it's going to be example colon space i dot to string. Oops. Okay. And then we need to actually add that to our list of classes. So list of classes dot add new the class. Okay. So that's the basic uh, iteration of or going through the i creating a bunch of the class as a list and that gives us kind of our, our database more or less that we're going to be working with here. There's air quotes on that database. Um, okay, so then what we need to do is we need to do our actual binding. So on our list box one we need to set the display member as display text right here. Uh, display text Okay, and then we need to do the same thing to the list dot value member equals. We can get it from again right down here. Data text. And it just comes down to using things that are easy for you to figure out and other people to read your code. I guess um, you know you really could name either the strings in the class anything you wanted, or wait. Were these anything you wanted, but they'd have to match so that the framework behind it actually knows how to handle and bind everything. 
and then the last thing we need to do is set that actually as the data source so listbox one dot data source equals our list of classes okay so again looks very simple I'll pause just a second to give you a second to catch up if you're a little bit behind and of course you can pause the video okay and then the last thing we need to do is make sure that we've got our click event here which I've already done our double mouse double click event on list box one and then what I'm going to do is just create a new string we're gonna call I'm gonna call it selected equals list box one dot get item text of list box one dot selected value okay and then just to verify that everything is working the way it's supposed to when you double click that you should get the data that's behind what's going to display in the list box so to demonstrate that when I click start here I get example 1 through 10 populated from the display text right here and then again right here and then the value member is going to be on double click so when you double click it you get that data that's bound to it so again very handy um, you can do things like store host name slash IP addresses um, or in this case a short form and a long form so if you were doing United States exam or United States states ex as an example um, I think that's what the MSDN article on doing uh, data bound objects does they'll do you know TX for Texas so you could double click and get Texas um, a lot of good reasons to use it and that really wraps us up um, again though if you have any questions would like expansion or something else you'd like to see covered just leave it in the notes um, feel free to give me a thumb up thumbs up I'm a horrible talker on Wednesdays um, and have a good day thanks bye